Evaluate the function and the given limit. So let's start by evaluating f of 3. That means we're going to go on the x-axis and locate 3. And in this case, we see a vertical asymptote. Your graph will never cross or intersect with a vertical asymptote. So there will be no output value. For that reason, our answer is undefined. Now let's evaluate the limit as x approaches 3. When we evaluate the limit as x approaches 3, that means we are going to be looking as we approach 3 from the left, it's headed up to positive infinity. And as we approach x equals 3 from the right, it's also headed up to positive infinity. Because these are the exact same, our answer is positive infinity. Number 2 from the try these. Again, let's start by evaluating the function at x equals 3. I go to where x equals 3, and it corresponds to an output value of 5. As a reminder, with functions, every input value has at most only one, a maximum of only one output. Now, when we evaluate this limit as x approaches 3, as we come from the left, it's approaching an output value of 1. As we approach x equals 3 from the right, it's also approaching an output value of 1. When those output values are the same, then we are able to correctly answer and evaluate this limit of this function as x approaches 3. And in this case, the answer would be 1. Number 3, evaluating f of 3. We go to x equals 3, and we can see it corresponds to an output value of 4. But as we evaluate this function, as we come from the left, so we're approaching x equals 3 from the left, we're approaching an output value of 2. And when we approach x equals 3 from the right, we're approaching an output value of 4. When those output values or y values do not match or converge on the same numerical value, we say it does not exist. Looking at this problem, we, when we go to f equals 3, Again, we see a vertical asymptote, and at this point, hopefully you know that our functions will never cross a vertical asymptote. So there will be no output value resulting in undefined. When we evaluate the limit as x approaches 3 from the left, it's headed to negative infinity. And when we evaluate the limit of this function as it approaches positive, excuse me, as it approaches 3 from the positive side, it's headed to positive infinity. These outputs are not the same numerical value, and for that reason, it does not exist. Now, in the next four problems, they're going to provide us with the function. We can use a graphing calculator to look at the graph. So I pre-plugged in the very first two problems. Make sure we have parentheses in the numerator and parentheses in the denominator. And we're going to graph this. One thing to look at here, by the way, is if we chose to evaluate f of 1, which they're not asking us to do. If we did do that, we'd go second, trace, and value, we'd play like 1, and we'd see no answer. Why is that? Well, if we substitute in 1 for x, because that's ultimately what we're doing, what we're doing would have 1 minus 1 in the denominator, we'd have some value on top over 0, 1 minus 1 being 0. We can never have 0 in the denominator of a fraction, and that's why we don't see an answer. That's why it would be undefined if we were simply evaluating this function at 1. We're not doing that. What we're being asked to do is evaluate the limit as x approaches 1. That means we're going to go a hair to the left of 1, and we're going to go a hair to the right of 1. So let's use this graphing calculator to do that. Just slightly to the left of 1 would be 0 0.9999. Okay, I'm going to put that number down here, and then we're going to go and trace slightly to the right of, of 1 and we have 3.001. So we can see as we come from the left and as we come from the right, they are converging on the same output value of three. Let's look at number two. I've taken time to plug this into the graphing calculator. Notice that there's parentheses in the numerator, there's parentheses in the denominator, and I originally made a mistake of not also putting parentheses around the radical and the expression inside of that radical. That does make a difference. Okay, we graph it here. And again, now this time, we're evaluating the function as it approaches two. So I wanna go slightly to the left and just a hair to the right. Second trace value, 1.999. Okay, I'm gonna put that value in. And slightly to the right, 2.0001. I'm gonna write that value down. And we can see as we approach 
two from the left and from the right, it's converging on the same output value of 0.25. When we look at three and four, we're looking at piecewise functions. So I have not taken time to plug that in. I'm gonna do that now with you. As a reminder, we're gonna plug in the numerator here. So two X subtract one, and then I have to put the boundaries on this. So it can be only where X's are less than, I gotta find the less than symbol, less than three. I'm gonna put a parenthesis around that. And now we're gonna add that to X plus four, and that will only occur where X values are greater than three. Let's just make sure I've plugged this in correctly. Everything looks great, and let's graph it. Now I'm gonna evaluate this function as X approaches three. And just my first glance here, before I even try slightly to the left and the right of three, I notice that at X equals three, they're at different output values. So I think this is gonna be does not exist, but let's go ahead and test it. Second trace value, slightly to the left, Oops, I must have plugged something in wrong here. Let's try this again. Second, let me try this again. Second trace value, 2.9999. All right, I'm going to put that down. And then second trace value, 3.0001. And we can see the output values, again, do not converge on the same numerical value. And for that reason, our answer does not, does not exist. Let's try another one. I'm going to convert three fourths into an equivalent decimal. And just I'll go back here after I plug this all in, just make sure that I didn't make any simple mistakes in plugging this in. OK, all of this looks good. All of that looks good. Let's see what we have. Again, we're going to evaluate the limit as X approaches four from the left and the right. And what I know already is that when I look here at X equals four, it's approaching from the left and to the right, and it's meeting at the same output value. Keep that in mind. OK, so let's go slightly to the left. And I'm going to put that value down and now slightly to the right. And we can see it's converging on the same output value of 5. 